Well, good evening, everybody. How are we all doing? Sam here, live on United People's TV with the breaking news that we've been waiting for, I suppose, on, what is it, a soft deadline day? The deadline of the 17th of February set by the rain group forbids to come in for Manchester United. And we knew that a bid from Qatar was going to be coming. We've got that official confirmation. A statement has been released. I'm going to read through the statement with you here live on the show as a community. You can let me know what you think about this. But this could well be a seriously significant and I would say quite historic moment in the history of Manchester United. All right. I'm going to run straight into the statement. This is a live show. This is happening right now. I'm sure this story is going to develop whilst we're here together. But let's run through this story. Okay, let me run through the statement, the official statement that has been released. Manchester United have received a bid from Qatari banker Al Thani. Sheikh Jassim bin Hamid bin Jaber Al Thani, the chairman of one of Qatar's biggest banks, has bid for Manchester United. Al Thani, the son of former Qatari Prime Minister Hamad bin Jassim bin Jaber Al Thani, man, there's some mouthfuls, confirmed his offer for the English football club in a statement to the Financial Times. Let's read through that statement first before we read the rest of this article. This is the press release that was sent across to newspapers. Sheikh Jassim, I'm just going to Sheikh Jassim for now, confirmed his submission of a bid for 100% of Manchester United Football Club. The bid plans to return the club to its former glories, both on and off the pitch, and above all, will seek to place the fans at the heart of Manchester United Football Club once more. The bid will be completely debt free via Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 Foundation. Now, I don't know about that 9-2 Foundation. That's gonna, I'm going to have to do some research into that. I don't know what that is just at this particular moment in time. The bid will be completely debt-free via Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 Foundation, which will look to invest in the football teams, the training centre, the stadium, and wider infrastructure, the fan experience, and the communities the club supports. The vision of the bid is for Manchester United Football Club to be renowned for footballing excellence and regarded as the greatest football club in the world. More details of the bid will be released when appropriate, if and when the bid process develops. I want to know, this is it. This is 100% 100% bid from Sheikh Jassim. Words there that are probably going to be music to the ears of a lot of United fans are those three words there, completely debt free. This means that's going to be a cash bid for Manchester United. 100% of Manchester United. We're not, we're not talking about a minority takeover here. Let's go back to the Financial Times article and let's read the, any full any, any more details on this. Sheikh Hamad, known as HBJ, was one of Qatar's most powerful figures in the late 90s and 2000s, serving as prime minister and foreign minister. I believe this is his son, right? No, Sheikh Sheikh Jassim. Let me actually see. I need to try and find a little bit more detail and information about exactly where this bid is coming from here. Um, As I said, this is a breaking story. All right. You've got reports coming from. There we go. We've got reports coming from France now. That this bid, let's have a look here. This is only, I, 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 haven't, I haven't verified this from any other sources yet, okay? This is coming from Tanzer Loic, and he writes, I believe, or he works for RMC Sport out in, yeah, he works for RMC Sport out in France. He's saying that the bid is worth £4.5 million pounds, with no debt and with investments in transfers, the stadium and training ground already promised. <sighs> This this is it, ladies and gents. This is this is the first. Is this the first official one? I don't even think the Ineos bid has come this far, is it? 
It's it's 20 past eight now. There's still an hour and 40 left of this soft deadline that we've heard of today. But this here is, is a significant moment. There's a Qatari bid to buy 100% of Manchester United and for it to be a completely debt-free bid. Now, I've said all along that being debt-free is probably one of the biggest... Um, the most important parts of this for me. Let me quickly go over here and see what uh, Ben Jacobs has been saying on this because I will definitely be speaking to Ben. Hopefully, I can maybe get an interview with him later on today and get some more information on this. This is what he's saying. Um, da, 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 da. I think this is... No, that's his picture. There. There he is there. I believe that. I've, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to read a few of your comments. Trust me. This We're all in this together, right? This is This is a monumental day a historic day for manchester united shegs you're saying there that you want Ineos to win the bid well let's find out when Ineos come to the table today's a day where we find out if people come to the table what's the bid price asking tech games we've got unconfirmed reports that that, that the bid is around four and a half million billion because if you look through this official state this is the official statement right there is no mention of price now, I presume that means that the price is going to be going straight to the rain group and the glazers, and that doesn't have to become public knowledge and public information. Presumably, right? Again, we I don't know that. Um, see, I mean, look, uh, this is the official bid, uh, Alex. As I said, this, this is the uh, press release that was sent to newspapers by Bin Hamad Al Thani for this organization. Now, if anybody lets, can let me know down there, do you know what the 9-2 Foundation is? Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 Foundation. Is that some sort of charitable foundation? I, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to research into that. Now, there's a super chat there. Let me read this one out. Sky Fox, how you doing, man? You're saying, well, this looks like a done deal. In the words of Slime Glazer at the World Cup, the process is processing. Well, this is more than just... This is more than the pro... This is... It's way past that point. But I suppose this is the process, right? Today is supposed to be the day where bids come in. And here we have the first official bid. Now, as I said, I'm going to be in and out. I'm going to be trying to figure out what's going on here live and direct as this is happening, because I'm sure this is going to continue to develop. Uh, let me see if anything else is being said right now. Yeah, so you get, as I said, unconfirmed reports right now that the bid is 4.5 million euros right unconfirmed reports which of course would be significantly less than the five million billion pounds that bloomberg was reporting earlier michael with a, a kind of a fair question there my thoughts right now are my immediate thought is fuck me this is happening this actually happening the concept of manchester united being a state-owned club is happening right in front of our eyes. And there is part of me that naturally does not sit right with that. I have to admit. And I'm going to be doing a video that's going out tomorrow morning that's really going to cover that in more detail. Part of me here is this as well. The Glazers are leaving. The Glazers are going. The Glazers will not be owners of Manchester United anymore. Come, I don't know, what, come the end of March? And part of me just wants to pop the champagne, get and go and have a parade up in Manchester. But I don't think it's as simple as that. I really don't think it's as simple as that. Um, I hate how football has become. Hey, look, Red Baron, I will, I will be covering all of that in a video that's going to go out tomorrow morning. For anybody who's just tuning in, for anybody who's just joining in, let me read the official statement out for you. In full, this is the official press release statement that was released to the newspapers. Sheikh Jassim bin Hamid Al Thani today confirmed his submission of a bid for 100% of Manchester United. And that's the, that's the most important part you've got to focus on here straight away. Is this is no this is not a minority takeover. And that was always my main concern of anything to do with Qatar or Qatari ownership. Back when those stories first emerged, QSI, QIGs. At least I have to talk about that again. 100% of the club. The bid plans to return. And look, right. You're going to see, you're going to see and hear this a lot. So like prepare to prepare for what, what is about to happen in this next few weeks. All right. 
prepare for what is about to happen because there's going to be some serious schmoozing coming out. Some serious good words coming out from anybody trying to buy Manchester United, such as this statement here. The bid plans to return the club to its former glories, both on and off the pitch, and above all, will seek to place the fans at the heart of Manchester United Football Club once more. The bid will be completely debt-free via Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 foundation, which will look to invest in the football teams, the training centre, the stadium, and wider infrastructure, the fan experience, and the communities the club supports. So right there, uh, well, I suppose we should have covered this in the first part, this isn't just a bid to buy Manchester United. Right there is a pledge to invest in Carrington, a pledge to invest in Old Trafford. I should have noticed that on the first read of the statement, but I've noticed it there. It's not just a bid to buy Manchester United. Obviously, we don't know the numbers involved in what these pledges are, but that's a bid to redevelop Old Trafford. That is a, a pledge, sorry, to redevelop Old Trafford and Carrington, as well as the wider community. There's a couple of super chats. Let me read these out down here. Do you back what you're saying there? Um, that's a bit of a weird one. And I, I don't think I want to pull that up, mate, because I don't really want to. That's just that's a bit of an odd one. I'll be honest. Uh, Gus Bus, you're saying, are the Glazers patient enough to wait for other bids to come in? What part does Rain Group play going forward? It's a good comment. It's a good question there from Gus. The Rain Group have been the, do you want to call them mediators? Probably not the best way to describe them. They are the group where the bids go into. They, from this point on, what will their position be? I suppose I've got, I'm going to have to think about it. I'm going to have to do a bit of research, maybe speak to somebody who's a bit more knowledgeable in that situation than I am. But you would presume that the rain group would still lead the process because past this bid, past these bids going in, I don't know what the exact next steps are. I've spoken to uh, Charles, the lawyer from uh, America, about when Manchester United have to make official statements to the New York Stock Exchange. And I believe they've got to do that when they do accept a bid, where, where, when it gets to that point. I don't know what they have to do in between or earlier than that. Uh, Red Baron, you're saying there is no price for our soul, in my opinion. Although I hate the Glazers at the same time. Aren't we hypocrites judging City and Chelsea fans? Uh, Red Barrett, as I said, I am going to be doing a video in the morning on this. It's I, I feel torn. I feel really, really torn. You're saying the future is becoming seemingly... I wouldn't say it's becoming clear right now. But what what is clear, what is now, it's right in front of us. Qatar want to own Manchester United. Well, maybe I've got to be careful in saying that. Qatari investors want to own Manchester United. And not only are they pledging to buy 100% of the club, to invest in a new stadium, to invest in a new training ground, and to invest in the teams and the wider community, they are saying they are going to do it debt-free. And that, for me, is an important part. It is an important part. But what also is an important part, like Red Baron saying there about the soul, that people go speak about the soul of Manchester United being sold. And I said, well, that happened in 2005. And the damage that's been done over these last 17, 18 years is something that, well, United fans will never forget. But it's not to say that I will just go and look at any new owner and, and be like, oh, you're going in without scrutinizing, without looking at every single aspect of it. And that's what my video tomorrow morning, I want to keep my opinion out of this, okay? I want to see what you think. I want to keep talking about it in the comments. I'll do my opinion in a separate video tomorrow. And you're saying down there, it looks like a good comment. I'll put it up. You say, we will continue to hold our new owners to account the same way as we have the Glazers. <sighs> we will. I, that, that, wasn't a, that wasn't a sign, a horrible way. It's a sign in a, in a way that, it's kind of hard to do this video live because I'm going through, I suppose, the same um, different emotions that you are. Right? I'm a, I'm a fucking United fan. It's just, that's the only reason I do this stuff. That's the only reason I do this channel and, and, and talk to you about it. And after everything that 
we've argued against with City and uh, Abramovich in 2003. And uh, fuck it, I'm, gonna, I'm starting to speak about my own opinion again. Daniel, you're saying amazing news. You're saying finally we can be excited for the club both on and off the pitch. Should we be expect similar pledges on any remaining bid announcements? Now, I think that part's quite interesting because it's now half past eight. Okay, so you've got 90 minutes until this soft deadline. I mean, as I said, it's a soft deadline. It's a bit of a random... You can't even use the word deadline. It's just a random day and a time. The Glazers can extend that deadline. People can come past uh, the 10 o'clock deadline and submit a bid. It it doesn't mean that past past 10 o'clock, if you haven't got official statements confirming bids, the bids can't go in. All right? Uh, Let me see if there's a bit more info here. One sec. There you go. Right. So this is coming from Ben Jacobs, who, of course, we interviewed here on United People's TV and who I'm hopefully going to be speaking to if I can later on tonight about this. Might be a little bit late, if not tomorrow. He's saying this. A bit more information on Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani. He is a lifelong Manchester United fan and chairman of Qatar Islamic Bank. He was UK educated at the Royal Military Academy and he was previously a board member of Credit Suisse Group. And here is a picture of Sheikh Jassim. So presumably, if the bid is successful and it comes through, we're looking here at the future CEO, future president of Manchester United. I definitely will be speaking to Ben, hopefully, about this to find out a bit more information. Because I think at this point in time, where we're at, it feels like we all need as much information as possible. Okay, don't we? It feels like we need to really understand everything that is happening to our club. Because we're about to change owners. Glazers took over this club in 2005. 17 years ago. And we are now at the point where there is a 100% bid to buy this club. And I don't know whether this bid is going to be enough to buy Manchester United. As I said, unconfirmed reports... I think they might have got the uh, full point. As I said, it's unconfirmed. I'm, I'm kind of uncomfortable bringing those up on screen here because I don't know whether they're completely correct or not. Let me see if anything else is being said about the bid. Um, of course, there's a picture there that may well be relevant. No, let's leave that, actually. Let me see what's going on down here. Uh-uh. Yeah, there's no actual confirmation, no official statement that's been released that confirms the actual price of that bid. BBC now confirming and reporting the news, but we've already done that. Let me see. Let me, I'm going to... Next five, ten minutes of the show, I'm going to bring up as many of your comments and questions on screen to discuss this as possible, all right? I'm going to bring that statement up here, and I'm going to see what you're saying down here. David, you're saying it still makes me sick that the Glazers paid nothing for us and walk away billionaires. Well, man, it really does fuck me off when you do that. They bought the club for 750 million. I think around about 200 and 250 million was their own cash. 500 ish. There they're about. It might have been 550 was a loan. That loan, that debt is still the same 17 years on, despite the fact that we paid over a billion out on interest on Dividends, X, Y, Z, the debt is still the same. And after all of that greediness, they're going to get somewhere in the region of four to six billion cash. It makes you sick. It makes you sick. Daryl, as I said, weren't they asking for five? We've seen anything banded between four four billion and six billion. We're just going to have to leave it in that pool right now. Until we get, I suppose, the official number that gets released to the New York Stock Exchange, it's going to be speculation around how much that that offer is going to be. But one thing is for sure. There's uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong to say this with such confidence now. But I think there's there is zero chance of the Glazers walking away from this. There's there, there is still fear that people have. Of the Glazers at the 11th hour, just sort of turning around saying, ah, change your minds. They won't do that. Not with the offers that are going to be coming in. Now, I still expect, I've spoken about it quite a lot. I still expect a bid from Saudi Arabia to come. There's still an hour and a half left tonight. 
maybe it could be a serious night this this as i said we don't normally go live on um on a friday night but this as i said is a, a seriously historic day for united uh michael you're saying we can all argue against it but ultimately we have to get used to the fact that these will be probably i'm not i'm not here to say let's just get used to it accept it shrug your shoulders oh well that's happened that's not what i'm saying it's not why i'm and that's not what i would ever suggest in the same way that you know full well here on united people's tv i've scrutinized any sort of bid from dubai i've scrutinized any bid from jim ratcliffe and enios and i will do the same with qatar next week that's where we have those conversations because these conversations are now prevalent and we have to responsibly look at both sides of the coin even if you only want to look at one shiny side you've got to flip it you have to look at both sides be fair and then move forward um rogeria with the best comment of the night Hope the Glazers reinvest their newfound riches into buying Liverpool. Please, 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 please. Um, Habby, you're saying this. I will be my submitting my <laughs> and my. If you've got four billion peanuts, it's a big old room. That is a big old room. Uh, Jeremiah saying any statement from any other bidder not at this moment in time. Okay, uh, there's still there's still maybe there's there's time here today. You almost feel like it's a little bit of um, a tactical maneuver here. Remember that the, the, this bid could have been submitted, the, this statement could have been released at any point today. Why now? Why only an hour and a half? It feels like everyone's waiting. And that it feels like, look, with a little bit of time left, you type it in the comments, actually. Do you think that Ineos will come out with a statement now? Or do you think that just looks like a reaction to what's happened here? from the Qatari bid because if there's one thing that Ineos has done so far and and Sir Jim Ratcliffe they've kind of led he was the, they were the first to uh signify that they wanted to buy Manchester United they were the first to formalize their interest in buying Manchester United they're not the first here to release this statement uh Fabrizio Romano just saying the exact same thing that we've been covering here for 20 minutes. So. Don't think that's anything new. Uh, Tony you're saying so far they are winning. Well currently it's a one horse race. So yeah. They are winning. They are the only ones. To publicly formalise. Their, their intent to buy 100% of the club. We, we've heard about the fact that Ineos want to buy Manchester United. Right. It's, it's, it's not gone any further than that. The Qatari interest has confirmed 100%. Debt free. Pledge to invest in the club, pledge to invest in the in, in the stadium, in training ground, in the surrounding areas, in the community. They are the first to lay out some pledges of what they are going to do. I suppose it's a little bit of a, a into the looking glass of if they were to become owners of Manchester United, what we could hold them accountable for, which I think and you said up there. And that's something that we have to responsibly do as United fans. That's why this statement's quite important, because right there. We've got things that we can now say back to them. Well, I mean, he's saying back to them. I'm never going to have a fucking conversation with them. But we've got things that we can now hold them to account on. Where is this investment? Where is this fan experience you talked about? They're quite important. A couple of super chats here. Let me read these out. Brian, you're saying, Sam, love your videos, but how the hell do I join the community? Brian, man, I, I'm sorry if you can't do it. I think you can only do it on your computer. I don't think you can do it on... um on your mobile but anybody mods can you help him please vicky oh, thank you very much man vicky you've been very generous these last few days it's great to have you back uh, on the on the regular one uh matt you're saying i don't think you can hold sons to the sins of their fathers as long as he takes care of our club with no shady business and backs ten hag i'm all for it i think that's a i think that's a massive simplification matt of the issues that a lot of people have around any potential takeover I, I think that massively is simplifying that process. Oh, man, I really, really apologize. I think I've missed some gifted memberships down here. Sky Fox, thank you very much, dude. You've been extremely generous here. You've gifted 15 memberships down there. And Habsap, you've gifted five as well. Honestly, if you're just coming and you're just becoming part of this community, you, you will want to stick around. Uh, make sure down there, I haven't actually left the, used the QR code. I'm not going to tell you how many people have entered that competition, but it's still absolutely open to anybody who wants to try and win a pair of, pair of tickets to the Carabao Cup final. Becca, 
how are you doing? You're saying, I've now graduated college, got a promotion in work, and now the end of the glaze. That's a serious day for you, Becca. I, saw you, I think you joined quite recently. Glad to have you on board. Um, Dave, you're absolutely spot on. This statement here, as you can see, invest in the football teams. It's not that this statement is confirming investment in every single facet of Manchester United. That starts at the very top with the first team that goes the whole way down through the under 21s and the under 18s and any academy sides and also the women's team and any structures, any infrastructure, Carrington, a separate training ground for the, for the women's team. What happened? There's so many questions and conversations that you can talk about that we need to take this club back up to where we want to be. We've been left reeling, watching. Leicester, Leicester City, Leicester have got a significantly better training ground than Manchester United, which is disgusting. That should never happen. Spurs, Arsenal, Liverpool, so many teams in the Premier League now have got better and more modern stadiums than Manchester United. Once upon a time, 10, between 10 and 15 years ago, Manchester United had the best stadium in the Premier League. Manchester United had the best training facilities in the Premier League. And Manchester United were the best team in the Premier League. Now, look where we are. I'm going to go down here and read a few more of your comments. Simi skimmed. Look, I think I've made my, my point on that is, is quite clear. And that's part of my reservation for anything to do with Jim Ratcliffe and Goldman Sachs and debt refinancing. I have to admit, I'm concerned about that. Doesn't mean I rule him out, but I'm concerned about that. And that's for me why it was always quite high up that list of what we needed. And being debt free was one of them. Um, in is you're saying if QIA invests, it's not bad news. They'll buy out the debt and rebuild the youth and main stadium. All that. So compared to the Americans, it'll be night and day. And that's, that, that's weirdly one thing. Again, that's what I'm going to cover in my um, in my opinion video I'm going to put out tomorrow morning. It's the one thing that we all agree on. Like, there will, And we will continue to have these debates, all right, about Qatar, about Ineos, about Saudi, if they, put, if they were to submit an official bid. The one thing we all agree on, like almost universally, in fact, is nobody wants a US consortium to come in and buy this club. That's the damage that the Glazers have done. That's getting out of the frying pan and into the fire. And of all, yeah, just all, all the debates we're having around Qatar and everything else, just we all agree. No Americans. No American consortium. Claus, you're saying, how likely is it for the Glazers just to walk away if they don't get the size of bid they were hoping for? Maybe this all just ends. Uh, Claus, I don't think that's possible now. Not with Qatar. The, the, Qatar <laughs> the Qatari bid will definitely. Maybe they're, maybe they're lowballing. We all know it's negotiations. You go in to try and buy a used car. You're going to go and put in 100%. Now you try and lowball. Even if you were willing to pay a little bit more. Standard negotiation. It's just that we're talking here about things that are worth somewhere in the region of four to six billion. Slightly bigger scale, similar concept. So I imagine if the if the if the Qataris are smart and well they're rich, so they probably they probably got the right people to discuss that. Then man, I can't believe this has happened. Honestly, I can't believe this has happened. Alex, you're saying, look, this sets a benchmark that surely no one else will top if it involves debt. Any other bids would have to be debt free to beat it. And maybe. You know what, if we're, if we're looking into, because if you imagine, right, this statement here, what is it, 150, 200 words? This wouldn't have just been thought up in, in, a, in two seconds and then released. They would have been very particular about the words that they chose. And maybe there, the fact that they've written that, the bid will be completely debt free. They know exactly what they're saying and they know exactly why they're saying it. And it's probably going to have the desired effect on a lot of people. Uh, Helen, you're saying only been United fan in a few years. Yeah, it's not been the best. I feel the joy of every United fan that the club is being sold. Thanks for the great content. I hey, look, it's uh, well, geez, 17 years we've had to wait for this. 
17 years. And it's weird. I always thought when this day would come that you just get blind drunk and you just celebrate it. The Glazers are leaving. I repeat, the Glazers are leaving Manchester United. We, will, we are going to have new owners. But I can't celebrate just yet. I don't. Th I don't feel that. I don't. I can't. Not just yet. How will that work with the women's team? As Qataris think women are second-rate citizens. Well, there you go. <sighs> Dave, I will be covering all of that. I promise. Anybody, anybody that tries to suggest I'm ignoring it, I'm not ignoring it at this moment in time. But if you, if you were to dive into that conversation, th it deserves its own conversation in itself is the point I'm trying to make. And it will get its own conversation next week in specific. Into, I've already got, I've got stuff planned around that. All right. Uh, Bruno, you're saying I'm excited, but that statement kind of seems plagiarized. Like, it's not plagiarized. It's just words that, you know, as I said, it's the schmooze. That's the PR. What you're, what you're seeing there is the statement that is going to be, released by everybody else that puts in an official bid. I don't know whether um, anything is going to be coming in the next hour and 13 minutes from Ineos or from the Saudi Arabian expected bid from private investors or US consortiums or whether or not they'll decide to stay behind the scenes because I'm not actually sure. How... I don't know what the obligations of going public are with this bid process. For all we know, lots of these official bids have already gone in. It's just that no one's released an official statement. I don't know there. All right. And it's going on here. Uh, Robert, you're saying, what's the crap with ads during light? Mate, I haven't turned any on any ads. That's on, that's on Facebook, not me. Sorry, dude. Um, dip, 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 dip. What are you saying? Yeah. Honestly, people, some people say some mad shit. I don't know how people feel so empowered to say stuff like that. <laughs> I'm an enemy of the club. You're not a true United fan. What the United fans need right now is the Qatar inventory. People say people do say some absolutely mad stuff. Um, what if it's the start of a major shift? Was comment uh, conversation there? Matty saying, "What's what if it's the start of a major shift from the Far East? What do you mean in terms of more bids coming in?" From there, because if you're talking about the major shift in the Premier League, well, that shift has already <laughs> that shift has already happened. Uh, Joby, you're saying I've been ill, so this made me be feel a bit better. Love the vids, keep up the content. Thank you very much, dude. You're going to be there on Thursday. It's going to be an absolutely wild game on Thursday. Um, Jonathan, they're really honestly like if you can't understand the conflicts that some United fans. I, I understand, right? I understand a few things. And, and there is there is a comment I'm going to pull up here because it's fucking, it's pissing me off, the amount of dumb people that say this. You have to understand that there will be United fans conflicted about this. We have sat there and we've watched what's happened at City with their money and we've argued against it for nigh on two decades. And here we are in the same position because football has massively changed since then. And on the other hand, there'll be fans that... Fuck it. Look where we are now. Look where we need to go. Qatar have got the money. They're going to make us debt free. Great. Let's, let's, let's look over everything else and let's go straight for that. And I can understand where these two people are coming from. And then you get dumb fucking people saying shit like this. This isn't racism. How in the world? Someone called it xenophobic earlier. I don't even think people understand what the concept, what the actual definition of xenophobia is. I want what is best for Manchester United Football Club. And I've applied the same scrutiny to every single owner. Potential new owner, anyway. Madness. Madness. To some people just, I suppose it's the internet, right? I suppose I just absolutely nibbled on someone there. But it's just, uh, you have to call it out sometimes. JDM, you're saying, I personally find this would be a wonderful takeover, debt-free, start fresh, and back at dominating like we are. Strictly from a footballing sense, yes. But it's bigger than that. It's more than that. And that is where that dilemma comes. Because if you just talk about purely from a footballing sense, 
then I can't disagree with you. Um, Matt, you're saying I'm American and no to an American ownership. Uh, what are we else you saying down there? Um, did, 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 did. Love my club, hate my owners. So it'll be hard. Will be will not be hard for me to say. Been saying it for the last seventeen years. Has nothing to do with race or location. It doesn't. I, I, any, it's 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 mad. It, it, it's mad. The things that some people just feel empowered to say, and that's because it's such a difficult, difficult, difficult scenario that we find ourselves in. And this is part of the video that I'm going to be doing tomorrow morning. It's part of my problem with the takeover of Manchester United. I'll leave that for the video tomorrow. All right. I'm going to keep reading your comments. I think I've missed some gifted memberships down here. Man, Liban. Wow. Li Liban and Phil, you've both gifted 10. Thank you so much to both of you. Uh, just to let you know, I've been speaking with the cameraman. Going to be getting some documentaries, hopefully planned. That's all that, That's all thanks to you. And as I said down there, Giving away two tickets to the to the two Club Wembley tickets, by the way, not just average tickets, Club Wembley tickets. Jeez. So that's all because of what you do and all the gifts that you keep giving, like Claus. You just give them five as well. Thank you, dude. There's a couple of super chats. Uh, one here from Danny. You saying, of course I judge, but if they put this much energy and finance into the women's game and show support for the LGBTQ under United's banner, then I am in. And of course, that is going to be a hugely significant part of all of this. We all watched what happened at the World Cup with Qatar and everything that happened there. So from an LGBTQ perspective, I can understand the complete opposition to it. And that's what I mean. You have to understand and empathize all the different angles here. So because of where you are and your, your thought process, it doesn't mean where that United fan is over here. It doesn't mean where that United fan is over there. And this is what makes it a difficult situation. All right? So appreciate that. Understand that. Empathize with the different points of view because there will be different points of view with this takeover of Man United. Well, I'm going to see if anything else is broken uh, in these last few minutes whilst we have a conversation. Uh, Lequip is reporting the Althani bid is 4.5 billion euros. That's the only number that we've had there, right? That's the only that's the only number that we've had. 4.5 billion euros. I don't know how correct that is. But one more time, I will read out this statement before we wrap this one up. Anybody who's just joining in, welcome to United People's TV. We're covering the breaking news and the official confirmation of a Qatari bid to buy 100% of Manchester United. Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani has today confirmed his submission of a bid to buy 100% of Manchester United Football Club. The bid plans to return the club to former glories both on and off the pitch and above all will seek to place the fans at the heart of Manchester United Football Club once more. The bid will be completely debt free via Sheikh Jassim's 9-2 foundation, which will look to invest in the football teams, the training centre, the stadium and wider infrastructure, the fan experience and the communities the club supports. The vision of the bid is for Manchester United Football Club to be renowned for footballing excellence and regarded as the greatest club in the world. More details of the bid will be released when appropriate, if and when the bid develops. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting. And here we have confirmation of that Qatari bid to buy Manchester United. Now we've got just over an hour left in this deadline, okay? Will we get any official confirmation statement from Ineos or a Saudi Arabian bid or anything from US consortiums? Okay, we don't know that yet. And maybe I'll be back a little bit later on today. I don't know. But I'm going to read. There's a couple more super chats. I'm going to last couple of last couple of minutes of the show. Please send in your questions or, or any points you want to be raising. And I'll try and bring a few up on screen before we wrap it up. As I said, this isn't just about my opinion. I'm not here to shove my opinion down your throat. Genuinely, it's a community channel. Genuinely, I listen to what you've got to say. And we have little debates about it. Danny, you're saying debt free means a 500 mil. Oh, actually, that's kind of a point. If it's four and a half billion plus the debt that exists, I mean, if 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 it's four and a half billion plus the debt that exists, Manchester United's debt is significant. It's not just the five hundred mil. We also owe around about three hundred million to other clubs. Plus, uh, what's on top of that? I think our debt is in excess of a billion. All in, all the different types of logic. And JVD is kind of a point you're making there as well. Uh, a super chat there from somebody. I don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss this. Um, 
Red Baron is saying, thanks for the nuance. I'm on the morality side, but that's just me. And I see the benefits of getting investors. Look, we're all smart people. Oh, maybe not all of us. Most of us are smart people. Of course, there's benefits to a Qatari takeover. But you can't just stick your head in the sand and pretend that there isn't something else staring you in the face. Of course, there'd be benefits to an Ineos takeover. But of course, there'd be concerns and you can't just stick your head in the sand and ignore those. And it's exactly what we've got to approach. The same thing about every single potential owner. Uh, S, you're saying, have you thought about doing a call-in show? Yeah, I have. But it's fucking risky. For every, and I, there are so many good people out there. There are quite a lot of dicks as well, unfortunately. It's a risky move. I, I really would love to have the confidence of doing that. Uh, but I'm not sure I would. I'm really not sure I would. Uh, and that, that's not something against it. And if, if it's going to happen anyway, it would happen in this community. That it would just be a great call-in show, but it would just be uh, it would just be a risk. Dave, you're saying to be debt-free and have money to rebuild United is great. It's the morality of potential new owners that has me worried. And you're not the only one, Dave. And there will be plenty more. And that's why I will cover this in as much detail as possible correctly. But thank you, everyone, for joining in today. Um, joining in this evening, joining in these last couple of weeks. It's been, it's definitely been some of the wildest couple of weeks that I've, I've, I've been covering Manchester United pretty much full time as my job. I'm just like, so I'm so lucky that I've managed to work myself into this scenario, but I have. My first season ticket year was Moyes. Imagine that, it's probably why I got it. Waited like six years for it. Got it in the Moyes year and it was it. And the 10 years since have been up and down. And we just watched our, our football club fade into the shadows whilst watching City win four out of the last five, whilst watching Liverpool win their first Premier League, whilst watching Arsenal go, might be maybe going to win their first Premier League since 2004. Now, we're st on the precipice of new owners, of the Glazers leaving this club. It's something that we wanted for nearly 20 years. We've got the best manager we've had since Fergie. If we can say that without a shadow of a doubt. On the pitch, we're heading in the right direction. And off the pitch, we're heading into a direction that we have wanted for a long time. We don't know where that road leads, whether it's Ineos at the end of that road, whether it is Qatar, whether it's Saudi Arabia, somewhere else. I'm going to cover every single aspect of it as I have the whole way through. Thank you all for joining in on a Friday evening. I might go and have a drink now. Not sure. But a Qatari bid to make Manchester United debt-free and buy 100% of the club has officially gone in you can let me know what you think on the comments after this video goes what well, ends take it easy everyone I th honestly thank i say it a million times your generosity as a community unbelievable and you're helping take this channel upwards and it is exciting take it easy everyone